Man, JC and Diddy have been teaming up on all sorts of troubles for the past couple of decades, and they're still roaming free. When Jay I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's Jay pregnant mistress, yeah. who died of an imaginary fucking aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora, who wrote the book, Bling, and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the fuck was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is fucking you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no fuck. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. Fuck you go when you get fucked over by the industry. Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me step in. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning just him. They've been good friends for a while, pushing each other up in the industry. But is this friendship strong enough to endure all that's been happening with Diddy's life? The first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. And then Big L died and then the next thing you know, Jay-Z. Doing songs with Biggie and building a working camaraderie with honeycombs. And then Biggie died, Tupac died. There was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and then saw Jay-Z. He will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. Who is Sean approved from the world of entertainment? There's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean. That's Jay-Z. We call each other Sean. OK. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else could call me Sean. He's and the no, only person who's Sean single, approved. There's not a single person that, that outside should be, of family. That should be, no, outside of my mother. Okay, just that should be calling me. Yeah, that should be calling me Sean. That's how much Diddy loves Jay Z, and Jay is just ready to call it quits. Things went downhill when all those allegations against Diddy started surfacing. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff, that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag, and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol 
And at the end of the night, or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but According to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Ms. Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Ms. Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. Cassie Ventura gained some confidence to speak up on the whole situation, and these are some crazy stuff Diddy's done to her. Things got interesting because Combs' ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, 
and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched, The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. He was in that man's house and he saw that man's wife and was like this. I was watching Puff. I think Puff was looking all done. He saw this this, this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie. Tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the f- kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what? so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cass, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her? It's something fishy about that, bro. Because you gotta realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago. So some of that stuff was cut out. We're gonna give you this but you gotta cut this part out. Let's just say, allegedly, just for the sake of it, Cassie wasn't the only one who wanted, or she didn't want it, but Cassie who searched for the big black, and she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. So if he wanna see it, and he want her to touch it, he might, that other person in the room with her just might wanna feel it. Allegedly. She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off session, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Old boy is freaking off also. I think that, and and me just being a trained investigator and reading through the lines of certain things. And one time I had read something that Cassie couldn't take it no more. She told her friend, and this was, she, she was under a non-disclosure and everything like that. She told her friend she couldn't take it no more because she had seen this dude do something. I've heard plenty of stories about him being on that same yacht that Kim was on and the same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. This is what somebody who was on the yacht said to me. My whole thing about it was this. Anything in that lawsuit you gotta realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody would look a certain way. Cassie may have seen some stuff that she ain't really wanna look at. He didn't want her to know who they were. So if she ever wanted to do what she just did, how does she say who how the person look? All she could describe is they, if they was wearing masks, unless she saw them before they put the mask on. All these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. There was a story that he was trying to get Chris Brown, those young boys that he had, a group B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine, ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him, but he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN 
is keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. You've probably seen the video that surfaced of Diddy beating Cassie up in a hotel hallway. Do you guys know how Diddy paid that hotel a ton of money to bury that video? Holmes wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. And now he's out there apologizing. Personally, I think can't not acknowledge that Jay-Z is even nastier than Diddy. There's times in your life, sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. If you really were sorry, you would have apologized to her in the first place, not when things get public. <laughs> At least make it believable. They both came from very humble backgrounds and they are both hungry for power and would do anything for it. You think I could book that for like the, the, the weekend of the 14th when the soundtrack comes out? If, if so, bump somebody. I, all right, thanks. All right, love you, man. Bye. I got my MTV out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! Is Tracy as guilty as Diddy? Let us know your theories down in the comments below.